The Tasca Show. I'm Tasca's Paradox, and I talk to entertain myself and yourself, teach you myself and yourself, and have a good time all together. Enjoy the show. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Tasca Show. Here I talk about business, entrepreneurship, data science, comedy, personal development, and more with by myself on 10 minute segments or with some guests with segments that may go to up to an hour. Let's move on with the story and a topic of the day. So first of all, let's start with actually what everybody's thinking about in the UK is cold. We've been actually indoors, spending most of the time indoors because of the snow and it's been a, like a cold wave um, with mostly yellow alerts all over the UK this week and it's going to continue for next week. So I hope everybody's doing okay and I hope everybody's safe and warm. Now, another thing that I want to talk about before I go, I go on the topic of the day is that I've realized that I have to go back on having a some sort of a schedule or a commitment for how many episodes a week at least I want to have because when I had this commitment of the daily episodes I was more um, consistent and and more up to date with everything but now that I don't have this commitment I, I mean I don't have it I don't pressure myself to have this commitment I don't know which days I'm going to record and stuff so I'm putting a new goal uh, starting now, so I'm going to have at least three episodes a week, uh, at least on the sec- of the 10 minute segments, yeah? And that would be, my goal is to do Mondays, when, one Monday, one Wednesday, and one Friday a week. Everything extra, everything more will be extra, depending if I have any, if there's something I want, I really want to talk about. Or otherwise, this would be the three episodes a week for the 10 minute segments. Uh, and extra episodes would also include, or could also include, guests uh, on the podcast. So, without further ado, let's move on with the topic of the day. So, today I want to talk about uh, influencing people and motivating people to do what you want them to do. Um, if you remember, if you are listening to the podcast and you heard the, and, and if you listen to the episode with my guest Petros Jakuris, you know this episode actually was like on the 31st of January 2018. So you can go back and check it out. It's a few episodes back. You know we talked about uh, motivating people, uh, like uh, having a team of volunteers and stuff. It's difficult to do that. Because you need to motivate people and help them see your vision and, and understand that they're working for something more, for something that they are proud of as well, not just something that makes you make money or something, you know. So the goal should be mutual, at least a mutual goal in the team and the people who work with you, they have to feel fulfilling. They have to feel that their work is fulfilling, that they are of value, that they provide you with value. And and we talk about that in that episode, and you can go and listen to more details. Now, why am I talking about influencing and motivating people again? It's because it is one of the topics that I personally like, um, and I believe it's important as a leader to be able to motivate and influence your people. But it doesn't happen only business, and I remember that this week. So this week, besides the snow, we also had the university lecturer strike, the university staff strike, which I think is going to continue for a couple more weeks. And then they are, they are going on a strike because of their pensions. And on top of that, though, you have students, a lot of students have are influenced by the strike. So they have no classes because of the strike and they're missing curriculum or or it's just inconvenient to them. And, and they have, if they have to have more lectures and more classes later on in the year to cover what they are missing now, that means they're probably going to need to pay more, uh, one extra month of rent, let's say, or more food. And that's expensive for these students. They already pay well over 10,000 pounds a year, like 12 to 15,000 a year. 
if you check out at least the Scottish universities. And uh, at the, that's just for tuition fees. And then at least 5,000 a year just for their accommodation. And then you need about three to 500 pounds a month for living expenses. So that's uh, this adds pressure on them. And we can understand that it's not fair. Now, with that being said, a friend of mine from China, she actually was very, very upset with the situation. So she went on to try and create a petition for students, international students, or any student that is influenced by the strike to sign asking for compensation from the university. Now, what happened is a few days, a couple of days ago, she texted me, she's like, oh, I heard your episode of the, of the podcast about motivating people and influencing people to do what you want them to do with you. And it's so difficult. I don't know how to do it and stuff. And I went on to read some of her Facebook posts that she posted, you know, and did, she did get over a hundred people to sign a paper petitions, but she also had some backlash because of her actions. The problem that I saw, though, is that although her reasoning and her purpose were strong and good, a good willed, and a lot of people agreed with her, she had a problem of expression. She she went on to be a bit aggressive, and you have to understand your audience. Yeah, in in Great Britain, people are not as aggressive. They like to be a a bit, they like to feel like they are asking for they want, for what they want, but they are, at the same time they respect the listener or they respect the person that they request a compensation from. Now, I don't say that's always the case, but I mean that's the British way from my experience, yeah? So my advice to her was just understand your audience. That's the first thing. Understand your audience. Even if it's if it's a business and you're looking for customers, you need to understand your audience. If it's a course, like a petition, you need to understand your audience. If you're looking for people to volunteer and work with you in your business, you have to understand this audience. What is it that motivates them? Why are they going to come and work with you? Or why are they going to buy from you, etc., etc.? Why are they going to get in and buy into your ideas? Now... If you are very aggressive, people who might actually understand your initial uh, reasoning, they might say, you know what, I know that that's not right, but at the same time, the way you go about it is not right, and therefore, I cannot back you up. And that's basically my advice, basically, that had these two points, understand your audience, and the second one, be a... just send your message out there, but not as aggressively as you are doing right now. Don't ask for compensation and I'll give our money back and stuff. No, ask for compensation in a way that you are going to ask for help. Because she went on uh, mistakenly to, she targeted the dean of the university without thinking, oh, the, the person who is responsible or who can give us a, a compensation is not just one person, actually, it's a team of people. The the dean is one of these people in the team. But the best way to go about it is not ask him for your money back, it's actually ask him to help you. Just say, that's what we're looking for, and we do believe that you are the only person and the most crucial person to help us with our purpose and with our ask. And could you please point us in the right direction to get some sort of compensation? Uh, that might open the door for a conversation, but if you come to me online on social media or you call me or you send me an email and you say, I'm so angry at this and I really want, you have to give me my money back. I'd be like, you know what, I don't have to give you your money back and you have to respect me a bit as well. So basically, that these are the two points that I made, you know, understand your audience, so the people who you want to support you, and understand the other part of the audience, which is the people who, who you want to, to be, to compensate you in that case, uh, so you might have more than one audience, yeah, and, and understand the language that you need to use, your approach, because of the cultural barriers you might have uh, up cases when you do business or when you run for a purpose, and it's the same thing 
that I see with vegans. I know this this episode is going to be longer than the 10 minute segment, but I just wanted to make my point. And and, and it's the same way I see with vegans. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the vegan who is going to be on your face and tell you, oh, you have to be vegan. How can you eat meat? Or how can you eat dairy? No, I cannot tell you that because I used to do it. And also, um, you don't have to do anything. Um, but what I do is try to educate people uh, every time the opportunity arises or every time basically they ask for it because people will ask for it now there are some people who are a bit more aggressive but this aggressive behavior backflashes as well and and that's why is the best the most influential vegans out there are the people who can actually negotiate are the people who can actually talk in a civil manner most of the time at least so the same way understand they understand their audience they understand why they cannot be aggressive and they understand that it needs time for the change to happen so you have to understand these elements of everything that you do so is it you want to sign a petition understand your audience understand who you are asking from and why and understand how is best for you to ask for help don't demand for anything you in order to demand for anything you have to be very powerful to begin with and unfortunately most of the time we are not very powerful to begin with anyway that's it for me guys i know it's a bit more than 10 minutes this segment but i hope you enjoyed this episode let me know if you agree with me let me know what else you would uh, consider when you're trying to recruit people to work with you or you you try to recruit people to help you with with a purpose or when you try to recruit customers or when you try to get something back a compensation of some sort what are the things that you think are important to consider before you start sending your messages out there or while you're sending your messages out there how you adapt and all this stuff Uh, That's it again, and uh, as always, have an amazing day full of love, passion, and compassion, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye!